Hi, I'm Pastor Tina Davis, and I have the privilege of being with Dr. Trish King, who is one of my favorite persons and people to interview. Thank you. I think I can say that here. Um, but she is a licensed therapist, and she is a teaching person. I, and I, I don't know how to say that. You teach everything. Like, it, like Even when you do regular conversations, I feel like I have learned a thing. <laughs> Today. Oh, that's a beautiful compliment. Yes, Thank and you. so uh, today I hope that you will learn a thing, and we're going to be focusing on um, anxiety today, and we live in a world right now where anxiety, I think it's like everyone has a little bit of it now, and so there's a lot of sensitivity about anxiety, and so I just have a few questions. This isn't going to be a long interview, so I'll stop talking. So the first question I have about uh, anxiety is what are some of the signs or symptoms that you might see in a person who's struggling with anxiety? Okay, so first of all, I loved what you said because I think we're using the word a lot yeah. and I think it's appropriately utilized and we are experiencing it a lot mm -hmm. since COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And it is almost palpable. Yeah. And there are signs and symptoms with anxiety, but from a clinical perspective, yeah. I think it's important that people understand that is really an umbrella that describes some other things. So I just want to reference this <laughs> yes. again, right? And you see all my tabs, but this is online. Yep. And it actually on page, let me get it because this is important. On page 14 describes anxiety disorders oh. and the different ones. Wow. So, yeah. so there's phobias, there's obsessive compulsive, there's general anxiety disorder, right? So it's not just the symptoms, but an actual diagnosis. Disorder, yeah. There's separation. There's uh, anxiety disorder. There's panic, right? Yep. And so people can experience anxiety disorders differently depending on those kind of categories. Mm -hmm. So we think it's important that people understand that. But we can talk about it somewhat globally. Yeah. So... Signs and symptoms for general anxiety disorder, which is the most common and the, the broadest, mm -hmm. is um, you'll see physiological changes. So you're, you're a little short of breath. We call mm -hmm. it tachypnic. Like you can't catch your breath. You feel a little short of breath. Your pulse will race. Um, and they can be together. Your blood pressure will go up. You may not notice that. You may notice your pulse. People also describe feeling having palpitations, right? Like their yeah. heart is racing and they can feel it or it's skipping or it's mm -hmm. fluttering. Sometimes mm -hmm. people describe it as a flutter. So there are physiological responses, but then there are also the psychological, so excessive worry. And this isn't, I'm worrying about something concrete. This is worry extensively over a period of time. So to really have the diagnosis mm -hmm. not just what we all struggle yeah, with yeah. and i do too is six months so it is more days than not in a week where you have these physiological responses mm -hmm. and these psychological feelings of out of control worry yeah. care concern um, you may even be obsessing a little bit about it more days than not in a week over six months so so from a disorder perspective What's interesting is if you just look at anxiety, most of us struggle with some excessive thoughts and some racing and some increase in our heart rate and some difficult challenges with shortness of breath if we're anxious about something. But we know what it is uh -huh. and we can usually mitigate it or do something to adjust it, right? Okay. And it goes down, yeah. right? This is over a period of time. And panic takes it to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. People feel like they're dying. Yeah. They feel like their heart is pounding out of their chest. This is very severe, yeah. scary reaction. People are scared. Yeah. This is not, this is a frightening mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important that people understand when I say I'm having an anxious day, this is at a whole nother level for mm -hmm. people and is not necessarily as easily um, mitigated or addressed or thought through or processed okay. through. Wow. And so there's a big umbrella. Yes. There's the every day we're all stressed about something anxious. And then there's the disorders, which are much more pervasive, and they stick around for a very long period of time. Correct. And are, can be disruptive. I, it sounds yes, like. that's a great way to describe it. 
in, they have to be life disrupting to become okay. diagnosable. Got it. Wow. So what do you do? What would someone who loves somebody who has an anxiety disorder do to help with such challenges? So back to this book yes. in the back guys is questions. How do I, what types mm -hmm. of therapies are there? What kinds of questions do I ask my adolescent? And there was a really great one. It even gives you prompts for questions, like the types of questions to ask. Mm -hmm. So it, it said, talking points, talking points. You can come to me and talk about your anxiety. Do you know anyone who has talked about your anxiety? Do you have anyone who is, is feeling anxious in your life? So it gives you some prompts yeah. of ways, because I think what people struggle with is, how am I going to bring this up? Mm. And so, the, again, Saddleback just did a phenomenal wow. job of this yeah. resource, and it's online, and we have the tangible. Yeah. So it's, it's think about what kinds of questions you want to ask. Mm -hmm. And what's neat about Google is you can Google. Mm -hmm. And how do I talk to somebody who's dealing with anxiety? And you'll get some prompts. Wow, yeah. So you want to ask about it. And I think it's important that you identify changes. So I've noticed mm -hmm. you're not joining us for social events as much. I've noticed you describe feeling out of control physically. I've noticed you're avoiding some things. You know, I've noticed you're not out of the house as much. Mm -hmm. You know, agoraphobia right. is a type of, of anxiety disorder. So to notice what are the things that are changing is, is I think, important. So it's really important just to start the dialogue so that they know oh, great summary statement. they're not... You see it, they're not doing it alone, and there's something that needs to be done. So resources. What are the resources out there? Obviously, we've got this book. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> there's some wonderful. great resources yeah. in here. And there are self-help groups out there. Okay. There's a lot on Google. There is um, some really good um, people who deal with just anxiety. And mm. if, if there's trauma, sometimes they can be overlapped. Yeah. So it would be important to delineate out what is trauma and what is anxiety. I think what's really important for people to understand is people know that this reaction they're having is above and beyond the situation in sure. front of them. Yeah. So somebody who's afraid to go outside or afraid to be in crowds or having a reaction to spiders or whatever it is, yeah. they know. Yes. So imagine what's going through their mm. mind in the way of shame and embarrassment mm. and hesitation. So I think what's important is that we just... We open, I love that word dialogue. We open that dialogue so they can say, yes, I am struggling and I'm having this reaction and I don't know what to do. Yeah. One of the things that I think is so important when it comes to anxiety is before you do anything else, please call your medical or healthcare mm, professional good. because we know that anxiety can be directly related to medication you're on sure. or physiological changes that are occurring in your body. Uh -huh. yep. So why would we go after the, the psychological yep. symptom of anxiety, if you will, when it could be some other physiological process that needs to be addressed and then the anxiety okay. will be reduced. So please, 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 first, call your doctor, get a good history and uh -huh. physical yep. done, good head to toe, yep. and then if all those things pan out as normal, then okay, we'll go down the psychological route. Yeah. And certainly counseling is available and those resources. And there are medications yep. that are out there, yeah. and they're not always about anxiety. There are some other things we can do. One of my, one of my students used to have test anxiety, and they didn't necessarily notice it mm. right away until they got to nursing school <laughs> and the ante was up, right? <laughs> and it was fascinating because they could take a cardiac drug before the test to mitigate those physiological symptoms. I mentioned yeah. heart rate goes up, breathing yeah. goes up, just enough to keep their body settled, physiologically settled, while they take the test, and they don't have to keep taking that. Oh, wow. And it helped them kind of get yeah. through the test, right? So there are options and treatments out there mm -hmm. that, that, depending on what the particulars sure. are, can be very helpful. That's wonderful. So definitely go to your regular doctor, find out if there's something biological, physiological. And then if it's not just that and that's not fixed, and then, then you need to find out what kind of anxiety are yes, they really dealing with. Yes, that's a great so way to so break so it down. Yeah, yeah. what is going on? Yep. That's great. 
So what are some, my last question for today is what are some myths or misconceptions that people might have about somebody who has anxiety or an anxiety disorder? I think the biggest one is that they can control it. Oh, wow. And yeah. that somehow it's it's something, it's just kind of just get over it. Mm. Like, I don't know what the big deal is. So what? It's a spider. So what? You're going, I don't know what the big oh, deal wow. is. Well, what's, what's particularly affronting about that is they already know they're <laughs> reacting. Yeah in an extreme manner. Sure. So so challenging in that way doesn't help. And I would have to say, I think that's the biggest one. That is not to say that there aren't some things we can do to to reduce those. Mm -hmm. You know, Netflix now has breathing things down. Do you know college and high school and professional football, baseball, sports teams are now bringing in people to do um, anxiety reduction kinds of breathing and to help them to perform better, right? So there's lots out there that there are things we can do to help ourselves, sure. but it, it's not always all about that, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's important. Yeah, I take some deep breaths. Yeah, I, I get quiet. Yeah, I meditate with the Lord and those things will help. But it's not all in their yeah. control. Right. It's not just get over it. Especially if there's a clear diagnosis sure. of one of those things that are right. clinical. I think that's great because I think it goes back to you talked about shame and guilt that people already feel of something's not quite right. And then to hear like, get it together, right? So, and my, my phone tells me to breathe now. Do you know the iPhone? Oh, that's cool. It literally will stop and tell you breathe. So do you do you do it when it prompts you? Well, <laughs> so that's the end. Of the <laughs> I think it's a setting you have to have, but it'll tell you to. It'll actually tell you to breathe. So there's lots of different. It's interesting how it does try to address at least a general idea of when we're stressed out. But that's not. This is a little bit more than stressed out. Right. We really want to come alongside people. And I them. think we're doing some things that are great for that general stress. I don't know if you've noticed on the television, but they'll do a 30 or 60 second countdown, oh, calm, mm -hmm. and they'll just count it down. And there's just quiet. There's no noise or anything. And and I've really tried to intention when those pop up, they don't pop up all the time, to kind of go, okay, I'm going to focus, and I'm going to respond to this prompt. Gotcha. You know. So my – oh, Another symptom is muscle tension. Mm. So pay attention to kind of the aches and pains and yeah. muscle tension. Muscle headaches and that kind of yep. thing as well. Well, I know, Dr. King, we could go on for a long time, but I know that this is super helpful. It was helpful for me. I'm going to start breathing when my phone tells me to breathe. <laughs> um, and certainly if you need help and you know you are just dealing with anxiety or know someone who is, please reach out. Don't try to do it all by yourself. Uh, there's a community that loves you. Thanks again so much for being a Thank part of you, today. Thank you, Tina. Take care. You too.